Good morning. My name is Otto Thompson, but you can just call me Brother Otto, and I am a minister. And today I am very excited to start this new series called The Good Shepherd. It is a four-part series, and the first part, we want to talk mainly about the sheepfold. So that's the reason why I entitled it The Sheepfold. And if you hear any dogs bark, and those are my two do dogs in the backyard, I'm recording this from my home and I have a lot of activity going on. You may hear cars driving by, but we're going to still push through and hopefully it won't be too big of a distraction. But if you don't mind, please turn your Bibles to chapter 10 of St. John. And we are going to begin to read from the very first verse. And I'm reading from the New English translation. I like to bounce between the King James Version, the NASB, the New King James Version, as well as the NET. And it reads, I tell you the solemn truth. The one who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens the door for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own sheep out, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them again. I tell you the solemn truth. I am the door for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Let us pray. Father God, right now I come to you and I'm asking you, oh God, to open up our minds, open up our hearts to receive your word this morning. And Lord, let us not just be hearers of this word, but let us be doers of it, O oh God. Let us have a clear understanding of what it is that you're trying to show us in your word, in this teaching, O oh God, that has come from your very own heart. These things I pray in your son Jesus' name, according to your good reputation associated with your name. Amen and amen. The sheepfold. Jesus says in chapter 10 of John, very first verse, I tell you the solemn truth. The one who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. Jesus says, I tell you the solemn truth. The King James Version begins this parable with verily, verily. And what is interesting about this term verily is that it is translated from the original Greek word, amen, which means in reference to truth, firm. It means surely, truly. It means truth. Listen how the blue letter Bible defines it. It says the word amen is a remarkable word. It was transliterated directly from the Hebrew into the Greek of the New Testament then into Latin and into English and in many other languages so that it is practically a universal word. It has been called the best known word in human speech. The word is directly related to, in fact, almost identical to the Hebrew word believe, amen, or faithful. Thus, it came to mean surely or truly truth making the word an expression of absolute trust and confidence. Amen.
Amen to that. So here, so here we have Jesus, who is truth, John 14, 6, beginning his discourse by saying, essentially, truth, truth, which is fitting because this is the thrice truth God speaking here in scripture. Jesus says, I tell you the solemn truth. The one who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way is the same as a thief and a robber. Let's talk about the sheepfold first. Now, now sheepfold is defined as this physical enclosing structure that corrals the sheep all together on the inside. And back in biblical times, they, they were normally constructed as these squared stone walled sheep pens. And with some research, I discovered that some of these sheep folds had heaps of thorn bushes placed on top of all, all of the walls. And we can think of it as the barbed wire of that time. And just like when you see barbed wire on top of six foot, eight foot chain link fences all around, you, you already know the message that is being sent out to all who see is keep out, hands off. No trespassing on these premises. So again, here we have the sheepfold being mentioned here in scripture in this parable. And this is where the sheep are normally driven in at night, you know, so they can find the rest and protection, you know, the safety and security from the wild animals and the thieves that are sometimes lurking about. Now, we already know who the shepherd of the sheep is. That's Jesus, the good shepherd, you know, capital S shepherd then we have god then we have the good shepherd ministers who are also shepherds as well but they are the little s shepherds they are subordinate to the good shepherd then we have the sheep and of course we already know who the sheep are much new and old testament scripture tells us that the sheep represents the believers the children of god that that is without question however the sheep fold the actual physical enclosure, who or what it represents, that answer isn't as clear as we think. Yes, at first glance, we may say that the fold, this sheep fold, this gathering place, obviously, this represents the physical church in the earth. But that is just a small glimpse into an overall truth that we need to see. I mean, here we are. Here we are all sitting in church. Well, I'm not, but I, uh, maybe some of you are, or let's just say hypothetically that everyone is sitting in church as they are listening to this message today. And we can most certainly look around and say, yes, we are all sheep. I think we are all sheep up in here that we, we are free to make that general assumption because we don't uh, honestly, we don't know who all God is working into the fold. But the question is, how much truth can be found in that generalized assumption? Because verily, verily, it takes little to no common sense at all to know that not all who are in the church, the church as a whole, not all who are in the church belongs to God. So without looking at any faces or naming any names, we can confidently say that the church is filled with a fair share of sheep as well as a fair share of potential sheep and likewise a fair share of unbelieving folks who can care less about becoming sheep. But don't mind sitting in church looking, looking sheepish. Matthew 7, 13, 14 says this, that the, you know, the gate is straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And Jesus goes on to say, he said, and wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Because the concept of the wheat growing with the tares can most certainly find its way into the church. So the sheepfold can represent the physical church. Yes, it can. Only if, only if this is the condition, only if it's okay that it doesn't have to be reserved only for the sheep. And that's the problem. And that's where we run into this issue because, because again, not everyone in the church are saved and not everyone in the church is looking to be saved. Some people just like to hear truth. I mean, honestly, be entertained by truth. Just love to hear religious concepts and ideas of any sort, like those who gathered at Mars Hill for that very purpose in Acts 17, 22. 
but they themselves don't care to believe in the Bible truth because believing requires practice of. And the scripture makes much of that sort of person. Listen to what James says in um, chapter one, verse 23 and four. He says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and do not and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. This is in light of his life. This is serious. Matthew 7, 24 says this, but everyone who hears these words of mine, this is Jesus speaking, and do not and do them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock, his house meaning his life. Verse 26, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand, his life on sand. This is serious. You see, the Bible says that our adversary walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. First Peter 5, 8. And this seeking to devour devil is on the job all week long through late Saturday club nights and early Sunday church mornings. You better believe it. He beat a lot of us to church. Jesus says further down in our opening text, John 10, verse 10. A very popular verse that is often quoted out of text. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. But before that, Jesus said the thief comes only, only to steal, kill and destroy. And what better way to steal, kill and destroy something than do it as an inside job? Tear up the sheepfold, the church from the inside out. Because remember. Paul said that there are some among us that are not of us. And we know that that some among us will not always remain among us because he goes on to say in first Timothy chapter four, verse one, that the spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. He goes even further on this matter in first Thessalonians chapter one, beginning at verse one, where he says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our gathering together, the church, the sheepfold to him, Jesus, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter as if as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means for the day or for that day would not come unless the falling away comes first. That falling away is referring to those who are among us who are not really believers in Jesus Christ, true sheep of the sheepfold. That is the falling away that must come first and then the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. And that separation of unbelievers masquerading as believers Departing from the faith has has already begun. And we need to know what that looks like, because the appearance of it can sometimes be very subtle, very innocent, much like people who move from one biblical sound church to another not so biblical false teaching church. And we say it's OK. He or she is yet a believer because he or she is still going to quote unquote church. Yes, America is sitting on Mars here. And this departing from the faith is intensifying. And some Bible scholars believe that there is a particular time frame, a, a day, a time. And I'm, I'm in agreement in which there will be this sort of mass exodus of people leaving Christianity. And when I say leaving the faith, it, leaving Christianity is it's not meant to mean actual believers losing their salvation by abandoning the truth. Because Jesus says in John 10, 27 and 8, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them. Listen to what he's saying. And I give them eternal life. He's saying it as if he has already given us eternal life because he because we have already received e eternal life when we receive 
Christ. It isn't a later on thing. It's an already thing in us, that eternal life, because we have received Jesus. And they, he goes on to say, and they shall never, never means never, perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them. Oh, I love this one. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So that means that the fallen away are those who were never part of the sheepfold to begin with. So again, the church at first glance seems to be the most logical interpretation in representing the physical sheepfold in the parable. And we are going to continue in that vein of comparison because the church is the sheepfold. Oh, yes. However, we can't just look at the black and white because because this is a truth that must be seen, if I may say, in, in the full spectrum of colors. Especially if we want to see things like the sheepfold with only sheep in it, likewise the church with only believers in it, that seems to be the representation of the sheepfold in this parable. So the question is, if you were a shepherd, hypothetically, and you looked over the wall and saw a few goats inside of your sheepfold, and it seems to be some cohabitation going on in there, some mixture. Is it still a sheepfold? Or let me say it like this. If you looked over into the back row of the church pews and and see a few well-known unbelievers in well-known relationship with a few fruit bearing born again believers. Is it still a church? Because if we are sheep among the goats, because the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. You tell me, does that sound like a refuge for the sheep, the believers in Jesus Christ? How can there be common bond, unity and fellowship in such of a place? What is our enclosure that that will provide us true rest and protection? Does not the sheepfold supposed to be the place of safety and security, a place of peace in all hope and truth in Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes, and it and it does. It does provide, or should I say, he does. Jesus supplies. Because what we have to understand is that it is not the physical brick and sheet rock that enclose us. First Corinthians 3.16 gives us all the answers. And Paul says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Now we can see the true sheepfold that is just for the sheep, members only exclusively. Now, in that sense of understanding, we can say there is no one in here but us sheep. No one here in this church but believers in the faith, because the Holy Spirit only indwells those who are his. No trespassing. Therefore, the presence of God is our sheepfold enclosure. That's the separation. That is the dividing line between the faithful and the faithless. The presence of God is the protective wall that corrals the sheep in the parable. So in essence, the physical sheepfold only serves as this sort of outer temporary shell called the church that 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 is similar to these temporary bodies we are living in that are perishing. And that is the that is the truth that I don't think we need any scripture to support. Time has a way of telling us that these bodies are wasting away. Yet the Bible tells us that our inner man is being renewed day by day because the true saints of God has has a spiritual permanent enclosure within the presence of God and his son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we have a more important, everlasting spiritual sheepfold that is incorruptible imperishable, the presence of God in us by his Holy Spirit. And that which is spiritual, unseen, faith required, will always trump that which is physical, hope that is seen. That doesn't take much faith at all. And let me tell you what our spiritual life should look like, firm and to the point. It is upholding God's literal, written, tangible word by faith. His word that requires simple, 
practical application with the help of his spirit. So we, we don't need to look for something to fall out of the sky, some sign from God to prove himself to be himself. When he has placed in front of us this book called the Bible, this book that leads us into the knowledge of all truth in whatever quantitative, qualitative measure. In other words, in any amount or way, shape or form, God's truth is amen and amen. Let us just let God be God. He's sovereign. Good shepherd, the sovereign good shepherd, and we are his own sheep. That's what he said in verse verse three. It says to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep. He said he said his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Jesus says his own sheep as if he is distinguishing his own sheep from those who are not his own people by calling them by name. First Peter 4, 16 says this, he says, but if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but glorify God that you bear such a name. There's only one name we need to be affiliated with, and that name is Jesus. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, for he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, you hear that? That we may be holy and unblemished in his sight in love. He did this by predestining us to adoption as his son through, as his sons through Jesus Christ. In adoption where God gave us that name according to the pleasure of his will. Jesus goes on to say in verse four, and the sheep, this is verse four, chapter 10 of John and the sheep, his own sheep, sheep of the adoption, follow him for they know his voice. We know the voice of the one who gave us his own name. We are exclusively his own. And if we read John 17, we, we find that Jesus prayed only for his own, his own sheep. In that prayer, he said in John 17, verses 1, 11 through 12, he says, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. These being the sheep, us. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I kept and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's why we can come together in the physical church and be among some that don't belong to God. And it's pretty obvious, but we don't know whose heart God is going to change at any moment in time. So, so we are among them and at the same time separated from them because it is by his spirit. We have our own exclusive sheepfold. Yet at the same time, we are close enough. Literally, we are physically side by side next to unbelievers who are not part of the sheepfold. But because we are all part of the same enclosed, um, this sort of circle of grace, we find that the presence of God will always have us all in the same place, the same place of grace. That way, those of us who believe can share the same love of God that was shown to us through the same gospel, same grace, unearned, unmerited favor that saved us. Makes us close enough to grab their hands and say, if he saved me, he can save you. Jesus died for all of us. As it is said that there is plenty of room at the foot of the cross without discrimination, for there is neither what Jew nor Greek bond nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. So with that being realized, one of the worst things we can ever do as sheep is this, is to believe that it was of our own doing when we came, when we became sheep in the sheepfold. We are the children of God who received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, because God the Father, John 3, 16 us. So love the world 
that he gave his only begotten son as a gift to a dying world, that his son may lead us all from death to life in himself, eternal life. And we and we can't work for it. We, we can't earn it. Salvation comes by grace through faith and not by works, lest any man shall boast. No, it's all it's all in Jesus who separate his sheep and have us come from among them, yet at the same time remain physically among them if need be, like in the workplace, out and about in the marketplace, as well as in our churches, even in our homes. Some of us live with unbelievers. We are together with them, yet separated from them because it is the presence of God enclosing us, sheep folding us, because we are the temple of God, for the spirit of God dwells in us, corrals us. Sheep fold us in his arms all around us in his love. The sheep fold. 